Hello again. In this video, I will give you a very brief overview of how to use the DevSpace YAML. So as I mentioned in the introduction, um, the DevSpace YAML is how you can declare your workflows. And if you ever used our quick start examples, you will probably recognize this YAML because this is the one that our startup wizard would generate for you. So as you can see, we have sections for pipelines, images, deployments, dev, and commands. We can also configure imports and dependencies, but they are not part of this basic quick start example, and we will get to those in a later video. For now, we'll only take a brief look at each of these sections, but during the course of the videos, we will go into more detail. Pipelines are how you define your workflow. You can give each pipeline a unique name or override the default pipelines. They are def, deploy, build, and purge. Within the pipeline definition, you can execute other pipelines or functions. And to execute any pipeline, simply run dev space, run pipeline, and then the name of your pipeline. For example, dev space, run pipeline, deploy. Now, sometimes you might need a utility command for your day-to-day -day work, but they're not part of a standard pipeline. These you can define under commands, and you can execute them via dev space, run, and then the name of your command, so in this example, it would be dev space run migrate DB. To deploy an application to our target Kubernetes cluster, we need to define a deployment and the container image. Images contain a list of images that dev space is supposed to build. Each image requires a unique name. In this example, the image that we are building for app is based on the Docker file that lives on the same folder as the dev space YAML, and it will be pushed to myimageregistry.tld slash username slash app. Deployments define how each service should be deployed. Now for this example, the app is deployed via Helm, but DevSpace also supports native Kubernetes manifests and customize. Here we are pulling the Helm chart from the charts.devspace.sh repository, and we are filling in the parameters provided in values. Now to get to the real meat of the matter, we can access all the sweet dev features that I mentioned in the introduction in the dev section. In this example, we're already doing a lot of things. First, we try to find the container that runs the app by using an image selector. Then we replace this container image with another image that is optimized for development, like this JavaScript image here. Whenever we make changes to the source code locally, these will be synced into the running container without the need to rebuild or redeploy. We also forward some commands from our local machine to the container and some ports so we're able to access our website. Once the pod is running, we inject an SSH server into the pod so we're able to connect our IDE to it. Finally, we will execute the script devspace sh and open the given URL in a browser. If you are working with one or multiple teams, DevSpace provides the possibility to manage dependencies and create your own custom DevSpace library but we will get to those later. So for now, I will bid you farewell and I'll see you in the next video.